This is an amazing sight. I wish all of you could be standing here and looking at yourselves. And so many people still trying to get in. I hope you can hear me back there because I appreciate you waiting and trying to get through the security. I want to thank Chap. Chap has been a wonderful friend and advisor to me and I'm so grateful to him and I know that you are grateful for his service here in Rapid City. So thank you to Malcolm Chapman. Thank you, Chap. I also thank him for his service to our country during his time in the Marine Corps. And I wasn't sure how it was going to work having a Marine officer and a Navy Admiral on the same stage. But I stood between them, as you noticed. And I think it, I think it went fine. And I am very grateful to uh, my friend David Stone, retired admiral. His last assignment was what, the Nimitz? The Nimitz Battle Group. And if you've ever seen uh, any uh, movies about these battle groups, you know what an awesome responsibility it is with uh, uh, all that he had to worry about because he commanded it uh, during the troubles in the Balkans in Bosnia and Kosovo. So. I'm very grateful that uh, retired Admiral Stone has campaigned for me and is now campaigning across South Dakota with me because his message is one that I want to really underscore. We have to elect a president who will take office on January 20th, 2009, ready to walk into that Oval Office and start making the tough decisions that our next president is going to face. This is no ordinary election, and all of you know it or you wouldn't be turned out in such great numbers trying to decide who you're going to support on Tuesday. It's one of the most, thank you, it's one of the most consequential votes that you may ever cast because when you think about how misled in every respect our country has been in the last seven years. This is not just a question for Democrats or independents, but Republicans and every concerned American. We're going to have to reverse the damage and begin once again to put our country on the right path. Now I am fully confident and optimistic we can do this together if we have the right leader who has sworn in next January. This has been a close, unprecedented, historic election, and I am honored to be part of it. And it's going down to the wire, because where we stand right now, I lead in the popular vote. More people have voted for me than have voted for anyone ever seeking a nomination for a major party in the history of our country. My opponent has a slight lead in delegates. So this is by no means over. And I think you know that, or you wouldn't be here tonight. In fact, I think South Dakota can help make the difference. People are gonna be watching South Dakota. South Dakota and Montana will have the last word next Tuesday. I just finished doing some interviews with some of the local reporters and one of them asked me, well, why are you campaigning so hard in South Dakota? After all, South Dakota historically votes Republican in the presidential campaigns in the fall. But I believe in repentance and redemption. <laughs> I also believe that the issues facing our country go way beyond party politics. This is no time for us to be digging in as Democrats or Republicans, to be looking across the partisan divide, pointing fingers. This is a time for us to be rolling up our sleeves and getting to work as Americans to solve the problems that our country faces. Nobody can do that better 
than we can. We just have to start acting like Americans again and get about the business of working together to solve these problems. That's why I have been honored to campaign across the country and why I am privileged to be campaigning here in South Dakota. And I think it's true, as Chap said, that there won't be a day between now and Tuesday when you won't have my husband, my daughter, or me right here in South Dakota making our case, asking you for your support. You see, we have this old-fashioned idea that in America, more democracy is better than less democracy. The more people who vote, the better it is. So we're not interested in preventing any state from being counted. We want everybody to participate. Our problem has been for too long, we couldn't get people to come out and vote. Now when millions more are coming out to vote, some people say, let's stop the elections. I don't think so. And now on next Tuesday, South Dakota can send a strong message. Wait a minute, we're here, we count, and we're going to let our views and our votes be known. Because what's at stake in this election goes way beyond politics as usual. You know it, you heard it from both Chap and Dave that this is a time when we're going to be electing a president in the midst of two wars. That hasn't happened before. Some people say that we haven't had such a difficult set of circumstances confronting our next president since Harry Truman became president upon Franklin Roosevelt's death. We know that we've got a lot of repair work to do. And I have been very specific in this campaign because I want you to know what I will do as your president. You see, I think part of the obligation of the next president is to be specific, to increase the accountability that the people will impose upon that president. I don't think we need to elect someone and not be sure exactly what's going to happen. That's why when I go around South Dakota, as I have in other states, I have told you specifically what I intend to do and how I will pay for it. Because I want to get this nation back to fiscal responsibility, where we were at the end of the two terms of my husband's presidency. You know, my father was a small businessman didn't believe in credit, as hard as that may be to understand today. He was the kind of person that said, nope, you don't buy it if you don't have the money for it. My mother went to work at the age of 13. So I come from parents who taught me that you don't expect to live beyond your means, you don't expect your government to live beyond its means. And during the 1990s, we saw the reversal of the deficits and the slow whittling away of the debt. And that was important because it released money into the general economy so that we could create more than 22 million new jobs. It removed the leverage that other countries have on us when we owe them money. It put us in a stronger position to solve our problems both at home and abroad. Now sometimes during this campaign I hear my opponent or his supporters criticize the 1990s and look, I know in a campaign you can be criticized for anything. I of all people know that. But I always wonder to myself when I hear folks criticizing the 90s, what didn't they like? The peace or the prosperity? Because I thought